Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be looking at a mini PC sporting the new Ryzen 7840HS. A very capable processor in which productivity, top tier emulation, and even AAA gaming is possible. So grab a cup of tea and welcome to Team Mandori. Subscribe. What? So this box was teleported here by GMK Tech for purpose of video review. No cash has been exchanged, and all opinions are our own. So this is the K6 Mini PC, 32 1TB model. Open Sesame. So here is the main Mini PC. Seems to be a new colour from them, and this one's called Steel Blue. Looks more like a lighter grey, and it's a Ryzen 7. It does feel quite light, but it's actually one of GMK Tech's heaviest Mini PCs at 530 grams. In this card here we have the manual. And as this mini PC is sold in Japan, this manual is in Japanese, English, and Chinese. I can make a silhouette of a duck. At the bottom of the package, we have two cardboard boxes. In the first, a one and a half meter HDMI cable, a base mount so you can attach the mini PC to the back of your monitor, and a power cable which is tailored to the region that you're in. Moving on now to the second box, we have a power adapter. This one's by Hunky, rated at 19 volts, 6.32 amps, with a maximum output of 120.08 watts. This is the same adapter that's sold with other GMK Tech Ryzen computers. So this is all that's included, but let's take a closer look at the GMK Tech K6. So this one has the usual clean aesthetic with their logo bang in the middle. And as this case is made of plastic, we should have a good signal from both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. On the front, we have a pinhole for BIOS reset. We have the on and off switch, three and a half mil audio jack, USB Type-C and two USB 3.2 Gen 2s. This is good for 10 gigabits a second. On the side there's a big grill for air intake and this is a great thing to see as we need our mini PC to be as cool as possible. Moving to the back now we have a USB 2.0 and a USB 3.2. On the top here we've got DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.0 and next to that two Ethernet ports rated each at 2.5 gigabits a second. On the end we've got the DC power in and on the bottom left corner Kensington. Kensington. Underneath we have the exhaust vent, and then moving around to the side, more air intake. On the bottom we've got a label and more intake holes. Dotted for her pleasure. Underneath that we've got the screw holes for the base mount, and we also have the taller feet, allowing more air to get underneath, further cooling down the unit. There are smaller holes just under the lid, but we'll check them later on in the teardown section of this video. It's about time for the size comparison. The GMK Tech Nookbox K6 is roughly the same size as a Chewy Logbox X, just a little taller due to the higher feet. It's slightly larger than the GMK Tech K4, which has a slightly faster Ryzen 9 chip. It dwarfs the what the hell is this mini PC from AliExpress, and is exactly the same size as the GMK Tech M5. More on that later. If you have none of these to compare to, here's a Game Boy Advance, a 3.5 inch floppy disk, a rechargeable AA, a yellow Duplo brick, a Satsuma, a small banana, and a Roy Bosch tea bag. Always ready for tea time. So let's check out the specs. We have the Ryzen 7840HS, which has the same 8 cores, 16 threads as the 7940HS. It even has the same Radeon GPU, but this one has slightly lower clocks. Saying that, this mini PC should be very capable. On this model, we also have 32GB memory and 1TB NVMe. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed ready to go, and with these display ports, a triple monitor setup is possible. Unfortunately, we don't have HDMI 2.1 yet, but what we do have is DP 1.4, allowing us to run 4K video at 120Hz. We've also got two 2.5GB LAN ports, a new Wi-Fi adapter allowing Wi-Fi 6E, and an entirely different case. To use our mini PC, we'll be needing a keyboard, maybe a mouse, and a TV or monitor. For sound, we'll also need speakers, but this monitor has them internally. On first boot, I'll ask you a few questions. Things such as language, region, name, and advertisement settings. I'll only ask you once, and you'll be right into Windows. If we check the system settings, we have the K6, and the chipset, storage settings, and memory all check out. Windows 11 Pro is installed, but it's not activated yet. To do so, all we need to do is go online. And this mini PC will automatically register itself with the Microsoft servers. The computer here came without bloat. We ran it through three anti-malware tools, and all of them came back empty-handed. 
We can update our windows with no issues whatsoever. And the same goes for the AMD Adrenaline drivers, which updated to the latest version. On all new installs, I usually go to the Ninite.com website, and from here we can automatically install a range of free tools. Simply check each box for the software we want to install, scroll down, then click Get Your Ninite. Run the downloaded file, wait a few seconds, at the screen hit yes, and it'll automatically install all your software. You might be wondering why are we using this old monitor, and the reason is fairly simple. It's to test out the vase mount. We'll need to attach it to here, but it won't fit unless we take off the two rubber feet. Now to secure it with the included screws, then another two into the back of the monitor, we can slide it on. Well that's VESA mount tested, but it's time to bring out the 4K monitor. And for video streaming, YouTube in 4K works with no issues. And it's a bit of Netflix. And as this mini PC has HDCP 2.3, Amazon Prime can be seen in all its glory. We can do other things like online shopping, or we could check out some cheap watches on AliExpress. If you need to use programs like Office, this really does have you covered. It's actually severely overpowered for such tasks, and this mini PC is suitable for graphics, video, and even music production. The chipset in this mini PC is very similar to the 7940HS, so in our benchmarks, we'll be primarily comparing it to the K4 we reviewed earlier. And surprisingly, the 7840HS really does hold its own. It's very likely that the temperature and power draw are the main factors that separate these machines, showing us that GMK Tech have severely improved their case design. Here's pass mark, and now this mark. It's about time to get into some games. Using Bluetooth, we can easily connect our controller, and the first game, Among Us. Needless to say, this mini PC runs these 2D games as smooth as butter. Is Hunt Down running at full speed? Double kill. You got hit by the best. Which is picked up for peanuts on the Steam sale. Moving on to some 3D games now. Here's Rocket League at 1080p on high settings. And that FPS, we're looking at a very playable game. It is some Dota 2. Now for some Counter-Strike 2. 1080p high settings, or about 70 FPS. Even though Forza Horizon 5 recommended us to use low settings, we're at very steady 60 FPS on high. Here's Tekken 8 demo, running at full speed on medium settings. And finally, some Cyberpunk 2077. With settings at 1080p medium, we're stuck at around 40 FPS. It's still very playable at this speed, but if you need more frames, you can raise FSR to ultra performance and it'll put you in the high 60s. Saying that, the graphical quality will be reduced. Moving on to emulation, this thing is a beast. But where beautiful Katamari triumphs, Ridge Racer 6 falls on its face. But this is an issue of the emulator itself. It's still got some bugs to iron out, but according to the Xenia GitHub, Ridge Racer 6 requires an amazing PC to run. We can just run some PlayStation 3. Here's Ridge Racer 7.
Wipe out HD Fury. How about some Vita? Provided the shaders are cached, it does run okay. But very similar to the Xbox 360, we have an emulator that's not completely mature. But even though this Wipeout game is capped at 30fps, we can play Persona at a big solid 60. Moving on to Wii U now, Star Fox Zero is running at full speed. We have a lot of headroom with both CPU and GPU at around 20 to 35%. It's Tekken Tag Tournament 2 for the Wii U. We do get 60 FPS, but there are little skips, and that's when the shaders are compiling. This is an issue with the more recent emulators, but once everything has compiled, this game, like many others, will be silky smooth. So let's switch it up with Sonic Mania. Or maybe Mario Odyssey. So we're very impressed by his performance, but let's take a look inside. You can easily pull the top off like this. And just like an onion, we have another layer. To get inside, we need to take out four screws that are located in each corner. There are still some plastic tabs that hold it in place, but if we pull, it can be removed. There's a 40 millimeter case found at the top and it pulls out hot air from the case. We got two sticks of Crucial DDR5, running in quad channel, and if you wish you could remove these and change them to something else. With that said, Crucial have a great reputation, and it's nice to see that GMK Tech have chosen a quality brand. And the same applies for the NVMe. This one's a 1TB Lexar NM7A1, which is the OEM version of the Lexar NM710 with the added heatsink. Underneath that was the MediaTek Wi-Fi and Bluetooth adapter, but this mini PC has two PCIe 4 slots so you can add extra storage or a cheap eGPU. To install, all we need to do is take the screw out and then pop it in. This drive has Batasera Linux installed and to get that booted up, we need to get into the BIOS. Easiest way is to search for advanced startup options and then restart now, twice. From this menu, go to Troubleshoot and from here you can reset your PC but we want to go into advanced options and then UFI firmware settings. Press restart and we're in. It's kind of sad to see that the BIOS here is fairly lackluster. We would have liked to see a few more settings such as fan profiles and memory clocks, but we can increase the graphics frame buffer to four or six gigabytes, which can help performance in AAA games. Some titles such as Valorant require secure boot, which is accessible here. And we can change the TDP to quiet, which is 45 watts, balance, which is 54, or if you want to push it to performance, 65 watts. There's an auto power setting, which can be handy if you wanted to use this in an arcade cabinet or we can boot to the NVMe stick we just installed. On this machine, Batasera Linux runs flawlessly. Even if we go to the controller settings, we can easily add a Bluetooth controller with no issues whatsoever. We don't even need a Bluetooth dongle. And the same goes to the Wi-Fi, where I can find and connect to the Monkey Balls network. And as we're in Batasera, we can easily access and play our old retro games, like Soul Calibur, God of War 2, And our favourite, Mr. Wobbly Leg vs. the Invaders from Space. Did we forget something? Oh, the monitor! Oh, we don't have a high refresh rate 4K, we do have an ultra wide 1440p monitor. At that resolution, HDMI tops out at 100Hz, but if you use a display port, it allows more bandwidth, so 144Hz at ultra wide 1440p is possible. And as this is heavier on the system, you may need to lower your graphics settings. Here's Tekken 8. Ultra wide 1440p on low. Most of the time the system is fairly quiet, at idle, completely silent. With two SSDs it's running around 9 watts from the wall, and it gets a little noisier at max speed. Tekken 8 pulls around 59 watts from the wall, and Cyberpunk was around 67. We tried delivering power to it using the USB C, and the only thing I had lying around was a 65 watt power brick by JSUX. We did have to lower the TDP in the BIOS, 
We're using the quiet setting, we've got windows loaded up, and we can play some Rocket League. If you are looking forward to playing with AMD AI, unfortunately it's not available on this mini PC, and if that's important to you, you may need to look elsewhere. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The K6 is an extremely powerful mini PC. With a combination of quality memory, NVMe, and its new case design, it's going to be very difficult to match the value provided. Unfortunately, there's no AMD AI function. We would like to have a bit more control in the BIOS to perhaps limit the speed of the case fan. And finally, if HDMI 2.1 was included, we'd be able to see 144Hz at a 4K resolution. If you're wondering which model to get between these two, it's hands down the K6. Not only do we have the better video port, but in AAA games, the system does stay cool, there's less power draw, and performance is pretty much neck and neck. With very demanding games, the K4 does start to thermal throttle, whereas with the new K6, it's smooth sailing. And with temperatures dropping from 10 to 20 degrees, this is one of the best mini PCs we've had on the channel. If you'd like to purchase one, we've added links in the description down below. For the cheapest deal, you can check the website, and more often than not, there's a coupon code you can use. But for the next two weeks, if you use the code K6PANDORI321T, you can grab this mini PC for $599. To finish off, let's go to the Rhythm Arena. And as a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Here at Team Pandori, we provide video reviews like this one, as well as help fix the cheap arcade boxes and the A500 Mini. If you'd like to support our work, please jump on, or a simple like and subscribe would do us a solid. She's getting experimental again with the tentacles. I will watch later on Home We Found. Easy boy. If you're interested, we've got plenty of other videos on the channel, including this one, which is a cheaper alternative to the K6. It's been a bit chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra. <laughs>